Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve deep into the captivating realms of neuroscience and the essence of human intelligence with A Thousand Brains by Jeff Hawkins. Published in 2021, this groundbreaking work presents a revolutionary theory of brain function, suggesting that our minds are not a singular entity, but rather a complex mosaic of countless mini brains. Jeff Hawkins, renowned for his trailblazing contributions in both neuroscience and technology, including the creation of the Palm Pillow and the Trio smartphone, brings a wealth of expertise to the table. A Thousand Brains ushers us into the intricate world of our neural architecture. Hawkins explores how each of these mini-brains operates, continuously generating and honing predictions about the world around us. His insights extend beyond mere theoretical musings by addressing the profound impact this model could have on the future development of artificial intelligence and our quest to unravel the mysteries of consciousness. Readers eager to engage with the frontiers of neuroscience research will find A Thousand Brains an Essential Guide. It invites not only enthusiasts but also anyone intrigued by the processes that underlie human thought and learning to uncover one of life's most enigmatic puzzles. Through Hawkins's sharp intellect and innovative theories, prepare to journey through the mind's myriad pathways and discover how thousands of cognitive strands weave the tapestry of our intelligence. A Thousand Brains, A New Theory of Intelligence Introduction. Unlock the secrets of the human brain with a revolutionary theory. Imagine a jigsaw puzzle, intricate and vast, each piece a window into the enigma that is the human mind. For eons, this puzzle, the brain, has intrigued philosophers and scientists alike. Yet a question hovers unanswered in the intellectual ether. How do myriad neurons, those humble messengers of the mind, collaborate to craft our intelligence, our creativity, and our very consciousness. Let's embark on a journey through Jeff Hawkins's A Thousand Brains, where we unfurl the scrolls of the Thousand Brains theory, a concept so bold it may not just illuminate the dark corners of our understanding but redefine what it means to be intelligent. This narrative promises a mind-bending voyage into the very essence of our being, a revelation of how our brains work, not as singular entities, but as a legion of interconnected networks, each holding the keys to the kingdom of cognition. This isn't just a summary. It's an invitation to a grand adventure through the labyrinthine paths of our own gray matter. Jeff Hawkins, with his groundbreaking vision, offers not just answers, but a whole new perspective on the questions we thought we knew. Prepare to have your perceptions challenged, and your curiosity ignited as we delve into the core of what makes us, us. Welcome to A Thousand Brains, a symphony of insights that will echo through the chambers of your mind long after our journey concludes. Part 1. Explore the enigmatic landscape of the neocortex. Embark on a fascinating expedition to the very core of our cerebral wonders the neocortex. Visualize, if you will, crafting an intricate tapestry from minuscule columns no taller than a grain of rice, standing shoulder to shoulder in an expanse as wide and orderly as a finely set tablecloth. This dense constellation is a map of your neocortex, a wondrous canvas making up the lion's share of your cranium's real estate. Think of the neocortex as the brain's newest borough, encircling ancient neighborhoods such as the limbic system, our primordial reptilian core. Those tiny rice-like pillars are what Jeff Hawkins dubs cortical columns. While they may elude the naked eye, merging into the folds of the brain, these columns reveal themselves under the scrutiny of a microscope as intricate networks of neural connections, not unlike the roots of a tree. It's this cerebral savanna, the neocortex, that empowers you to bask in a symphony, to weave words into poetry, to unlock the mysteries of the universe, and to experience the profound ruminations of existence. Yet, 
this vast dominion of versatility is unified in its appearance wherever you glance, a homogeneity that belies the complexity within. Even more puzzling is the stark resemblance this part of your brain bears to the neocortex of other mammals, many of whom are strangers to the subtleties of human expression or the complexities of abstract thought. How can it be that such a seemingly uniform structure, the cortical column, is behind the multifaceted theater of abilities and sensations that we experience? Therein lies the enigma we are poised to unravel. Prepare to journey through the inner sanctums of the mind and uncover how this singular, repetitive neural fabric weaves the rich tapestry of our mental prowess. Part 2. Navigating the World as a Master of Prediction Envision, if you will, a brain suspended in serenity, secluded in a vat devoid of light, sound, and sensation. This brain, adrift in solitude, is suddenly awakened to a cascade of data. Abstract pulses fed from a lens peering into the world outside. This is where the magic of the neocortex begins. Like an infant deciphering the contours of the world, the brain discerns patterns within this data stream, a relentless algorithm endlessly churning through layers of abstraction. Its goal is not to simply perceive, but to foresee, to project the reels of impending sensory experiences with the precision of a seasoned weather forecaster. When an expectation is foiled, the brain adapts, fine-tuning its internal model in pursuit of unerring foresight. Now imagine if we equip our vat-contained brain with limbs, extensions to grasp the world and mold it, turning observation into interaction. Consider the humble stapler, a foreign object to our brain. By manipulating it, examining its every angle and action, the brain doesn't merely absorb, it generates knowledge, assimilating each new discovery into a more refined worldview. We, whether as humans or mere organisms, are in essence modelers. Our survival hinges on the accuracy of our predictions, leveraging foresight to navigate and control our existence. Take, for example, opening a door or building rapport. Each is a testament to the brain's subtle dance with the future, a harmony of predictions and outcomes. Intelligence, then, emerges as the capacity to spawn precise world models piece by piece, using them to manipulate our environment for survival, to thrive and propagate our lineage. You, listening to this, are the embodiment of that secluded brain in its vat. Your consciousness is an elaborate illusion, a simulation conjured by your neocortex's unceasing quest to map the bewildering universe beyond its confines. So, the question stands. How exactly do we construct these intricate models? How does our cerebral symphony compose the notes of prediction? And what revelations does this uncover about the fantastical arrangement of the neocortex, the multitude of cortical columns that make up the foundation of our very being? Part 3. Dive into the complexity of your multiple minds. To grasp the radical insights of Jeff Hawkins, let's tread through the discarded notions of a bygone era in neuroscience. Our exploration begins with dismantling a long-standing framework that imagined the brain as a neatly arranged jigsaw of functional pieces, a dedicated sensory suite, and a motor department choreographing every move. The picture this old guard painted was simple. Sensory information streams in, gets broken down into elementary shapes and colors, and ultimately assembles into the complex objects we recognize. Subsequently, a cerebral boardroom deliberates over this data, issuing commands to our corporeal machinery to act accordingly. But, according to Hawkins, that depiction is now archaic. The brain does not segregate its operations into these tidy compartments. Instead, neuroscientists have unearthed a reality that is far more intricate. They've discovered that each of our cortical columns, the legion of mini-brain pillars, are equipped with their own sensory and motor lines. If we zoom in on one column connected to the eye, it's not just processing visuals, it's also intertwined with the muscles that guide the eye's gaze. Picture this, a staggering 150,000 tiny brains, each solitary among the multitude, perceiving, modeling, and interacting with the world in its own right. 
this seemingly outlandish notion sheds light on a trio of enduring cerebral conundrums. Why does the neocortex, regardless of its vast range of capabilities, wear a uniform structure throughout? How can animals, through scientific tinkering, have their sensory nerves cross-wired yet still perceive the world coherently? And what allows the brain to bounce back with such resilience, reconfiguring itself around the scars of injury? The answer lies in the uniformity of the neocortex. Its segments are not so much specialized as they are universally plugged into different facets of our reality. Consider the overwhelming breadth of experiences and concepts that make up reality. An intricate web of emotions, nature, culture, and science. Evolution's brilliance was to engineer this complexity with a fundamental building block easier to replicate. The essential circuit housed in every cortical column. The implications are profound. Unravel the mysteries of just one cortical column, and you hold a key to the entire mind and its wondrous capabilities. But how do these miniature cerebral counterparts operate within us? What's the secret behind the curtain of these intriguing mini yous? Hawkins, alongside his team of explorers within the labyrinth of the mind, believes they're onto something and it's about to flip everything we know about our brain on its head. Part 4. The Dance of Cognition. Prediction, Action, and Sensation. Let's unravel the tapestry of thought down to its most basic thread, the anticipation of sensory input following our every action. When we engage with the world, our brain makes a bet on what will come next, waiting to see if reality matches its wager. This predictive choreography is not the domain of some central maestro, but rather occurs within each and every one of the cortiki's multitude of tiny orchestras, the cortical columns. Each takes a distinct fragment of the world's sensory symphony and tries to compose its own version of what comes next. To understand this act of cognition, imagine each column storing its piece of an object like our trusty stapler, with hundreds of columns working in sync. What differentiates one mini-brain from the next? Enter the concept of reference frames, the cortical column's inbuilt coordinate systems. They chart the sensory space much like cartographers mapping the Earth using lines of longitude and latitude. Reference frames allow each cortical column to navigate a specific slice of sensory experience, relating movements to sensations within a specific scope. Ponder momentarily about being handed a coffee cup while blindfolded. Using just a fingertip, you could likely discern its identity by mapping the sweep of contours under your skin against your cognitive blueprint of a cup. This ability, Hawkins argues, springs from ancestral mechanisms in our evolutionary playbook, grid cells. These navigational aids of our primitive forebearers were co-opted to chart not just physical terrain, but the topographic intricacies of objects against the senses. As your finger traces the cup's landscape, your brain forecasts the tactile journey unfolding. Any deviation, like an unforeseen crack, prompts your internal model to adapt, capturing this newfound anomaly within its bounds. Your mental sketch of the coffee cup is thus a territory charted on the sensory map analogous to the path an ant might chart across the cup's surface, feeling every rise and dip along its way. Have we tied your mind into a cognitive knot yet? Fear not. Hold on to these threads as we weave our way through the last few puzzles in Hawkins's grand cerebral tapestry. Part 5. The Ballet of Thoughts, Higher Cognition and the Brain's Democracy We've delved into the nuanced dance of sensory inputs tied to physical objects, but our cognitive repertoire extends far beyond the mundane, into the elevated realms of language, philosophy, and even the abstract nuances of mathematics. How do the fundamental principles we've discussed, movement, sensation, and the predictive models that arise from them, apply to these higher-order thought processes? Envision for a moment traversing your own living quarters with your eyes as shutters to the world. Despite the darkness, a vivid map of your surroundings unfurls in your mind's eye. 
each door, each hallway, every corner of your kitchen vividly reconstructed. As you navigate this internal representation, your brain is refining its predictions based on patterns of anticipated sensory experiences, akin to a mental stroll across a familiar terrain. Any thread of thought or bubble of imagination employs a similar mechanism of mental navigation, striding through the topological tapestry of abstract concepts as if trekking across a landscape of ideas. Consider all that we experience, the art we admire, the mathematical principles we ponder, and even the social constructs we navigate, they are all crafted within this cognitive architecture. Our understanding of everything from the enigmatic smile of the Mona Lisa to the rhythm of reggaeton beats is built on intricate mappings within the neocortex. So how do we integrate these myriad slices of reality, all these individual models, into one cohesive consciousness? How does the multitude of mental fragments collaborate to form the symphony of the self? The answer is akin to a collective decision-making process within the brain's own direct democracy. Inside our heads, certain neurons step beyond their private enclaves, reaching out across the expanse of the brain. These are the voting neurons, diplomats of the cortical columns, bridging distant mental models. When we encounter something familiar, Say, our friend the coffee cup again. Recognition dawns not from a single column's epiphany, but from a chorus of consensus among countless neural predictions. The majority's aha moment signals the identification of the coffee cup. Jeff Hawkins suggests that the tapestry of our consciousness, the essence of our lived experience, emerges from the ongoing tally of thoughts within this neural electorate. Our very awareness is the outcome of the brain's internal democracy as countless votes are cast and recounted, shaping the story of our reality. It's an elegant governance of the mind, where every column has a voice and the majority crafts the narrative of our lives. Final Summary And thus, we've journeyed through the labyrinth of the neocortex, guided by the light of Jeff Hawkins's groundbreaking Thousand Brains theory. Picture the neocortex not just as a thinking cap, but a constellation of 150,000 cortical columns, each a miniature realm of cognition, a mini-brain. These diminutive powerhouses aren't just cogs in a vast machine. They are structured around prediction engines, wired to anticipate sensory outcomes from actions. In each column lies a reference frame, akin to a personal navigator, charting a unique sliver of sensory experiences. These navigational maps enable us to venture beyond the tangible and roam the intricate abstract domains of thought, a testament to the astonishing versatility of the brain's architecture. When the time comes to synthesize these individual perspectives into a single coherent percept or idea, our neural assembly engages in a democratic process The voting neurons cast their ballots, the tallies are counted, and the majority's view shapes the narrative of our conscious experience. Wrapped in the simplicity of the cortical column lies the profound complexity of human intelligence. Whether you're wrapping your mind around the subtleties of art, the abstraction of algebra, or the delicate dance of social dynamics, you're exercising a vast neural democracy, an intricate reverie devised by nature's elegant hand. With this illumination of the mental cosmos, one can't help but marvel at the sheer ingenuity embedded within our skulls. Each column, each neuron, each synaptic flash uniting to chart the infinite terrain of the human mind. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.